Actually, I want to say this. At this point, we all know that we, all of us, haven't done enough to the people around us. Do you agree? Yes. We haven't done enough. And if we look at, did I do enough? Nobody says I've done enough. So everyone would have some guilt feeling easily. But then God says, you have tried. And for many people, they have tried hard, but they haven't done enough. And still, when we repent, God forgives us. So if we continue to feel guilty, and then, so I'm going to guide the person. When you continue to feel guilty, does it help you? Does it help you to love the other people? Not the, your relative who is still alive. If you continue to feel guilty, you cannot love the people around you now. So you will feel more. So you want to get rid of the guilt feeling. And what did Jesus do? So ask him, what did Jesus do to help us to be relieved from the guilt feeling? Because Jesus has forgiven us. And even when people commit very serious sins, even David commit adultery and murder. He should have been put to death. But he was truly repentant, and God truly forgave him. But he had to suffer the consequence of the sins. But God still forgave him, and called him still the one God is pleased with. That God was still pleased with him, because he was truly repentant. So, does David have to feel guilty for his whole lifetime? No. 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 If he continues to feel guilty, he has no strength. So, we can use different ways to guide a person to understand that we all have guilt feeling. And it doesn't help. But God has forgiven us so that we don't have to continue to feel guilty. guilty. And then each day he can say this. I have confessed my sin and God is faithful and just. He will for sure forgive my sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So continue to declare this. that To believe that God really has forgiven us. And God's forgiveness, I have used an illustration God has given me. God's forgiveness is like switching on the light. Now I know in this country sometimes the electricity doesn't come. But when there is electricity, when you switch on the light, will the light come on every time? Or, or does the light say, well today I, I'm in no mood, I will not turn on for you. Will the light change his mind sometimes? No. no. He will obey you every time if there is electricity. God obeys his rules, his law every time. Now this is good news, right? Yes. Does, do people always obey the rules? No. no. Now even your parents, they say, you do this, I'll be happy. But sometimes you do it, he's not happy, right? Yeah. But for God, when you do it, he said he's happy. When you do it sincerely to give a cup for water, God will for sure remember and reward. So we know that God follows his rules, his law. That's wonderful about God. Isn't that true? Yeah. God's law is wonderful. And God's holiness is wonderful. I told people, because you go to heaven, no one is angry with you anymore. Hallelujah. No one dislikes you anymore. Hallelujah. So it's wonderful to be holy in heaven. And we can have that holiness at home and in the family and in the church. Okay, any question? Yeah. I want to know about those that are involved in counseling. Those involved in counseling. In order to be qualified for counseling, the person has to learn much more, has to do counseling. But for pastors, you have no choice. For leaders, you have no choice because people will come to you for help. The moment they come to you for help, you are counseling. But the point is, if you remember what I said today, try not to accuse, don't just teach but listen and guide the person and also discern whether the person is willing to change. If someone says, I want to change, I want to change, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, then he's asking for teaching. So we discern. If someone is asking for teaching, we can teach right away. But if someone says, you know, I want to serve God, I have no strength. Now, he has two questions there. Now listen. Listen to this. When a person says to you, I want to serve God, but I cannot do it well. There are two questions he's raising. Can you name the two questions? Can you name the two questions? One question is, he's saying, I'm not doing well. I feel bad about it. Okay. 
when a person says something, very often he has multiple messages. When a person says, I've been trying to work hard in my ministry and I'm not doing well, he's conveying at least two messages. One, he feels bad that he doesn't do well. Second, he wants you to help him. So there are two, two different things. But many people will just help. Instead of saying, I know it's difficult when you try to do ministry well and you're not doing well, you feel, you might feel guilty, right? You ask him, you might feel guilty or you might feel insufficient. Is that true? Then we are responding to the feelings. So get used to that. Practice that with your husband and wife. Practice that with people so we can listen to the feeling. It's, I want to say it's very, very, very difficult because people will have a tendency just to teach. People don't want to respond to the feelings of people, okay? I hope you have this sink in your mind. Okay, come on. Any question? Please stand up here and wait. Thank you, sir. Uh, my question has to is in two ways. So first of all, you're gonna read it. Oh. <laughs> Is it only for those who are those who are in our churches? Or does it involve sinners? Okay. okay, let me say this. He's asking whether council is for church members or for sinners. Okay, you can go back. Oh, you want to ask? Okay, I'm Okay, how long is this? Jesus said in Matthew 28 and from verse 19, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to all nations, teaching them to baptize and uh, teaching them to observe all I have commanded. Then my question goes this way. It, it does counsel and come first if it is a sinner? Or maybe do we start my teaching? Okay, counseling is used even in daily conversation. If in your daily conversation you are teaching all the time, People sit by you, you say, did you pray today? You have to remember to pray. Read the Bible. Did you read the Bible? Did you obey God? Did you love the people? Did you tell the gospel? Now, in our daily conversation, if a person keeps teaching people, how does that make you feel? Does it motivate you to change? No. Now, we have to teach. As we said yesterday, the, pro uh, the prophet when we prophesy, we will edify, uh, we'll comfort, and we'll exhort. So there's a place for each one of this. So comfort comes in the area of counseling. And also, in order to change a person, for instance, Matthew 18, Jesus talked about someone has sinned. We go to that person. There must be some listening, right? We want to find out what happened. And then you find that the person has sinned. When you realize the person has sinned, do you want to ask questions? For instance, you notice when Jesus re replied to the Pharisees, he asked questions. When the Pharisees asked him, on what authority do you do all these things? And Jesus said, okay, answer my first question first. On what authority did John the Baptist came? And they refuse to say it because they say if we say he came from God, then, then he will say, why did you follow him? And then if we say he's not from God, then the people will stone him. So Jesus was guiding them to re to realize their problem, but they don't repent. So that's the place of counseling. Now, in counseling, it applies in every walk of life, even preaching. You notice, I have taught, I have tell you what to do, I've told you what to do. But at the same time, I also ask you questions. Do you want, do you believe that Jesus will come back? Do you believe that he will exterminate our lives? Do you want Jesus to praise you, to say you are good and faithful servant? So I am using counseling skill when I'm preaching. So 
there is a place for teaching. There is a place for counseling. It's for both. The Bible has both. You know, that if you read carefully in the Bible, there are many places that God asks the people, do you want death? Do you want death? Why do you seek after death? So that's counseling, asking the people, why are you like that? So it's trying to change people's thinking. So counseling can be used in preaching and talking to the sinners outside of, of course we need counseling. If we just go to a sinner and say, you don't repent, you go to hell. You have to believe in Jesus so you can have eternal life. No, he will reject you right away because you are not listening to him. So we want to build the relationship and the trust. And then we can find out how the person is in a daily life. Uh, does he have a peaceful life, happy life? Does he have any problem? And he says he has problem. Then we don't say, you have sin. But we'll say, do you want to get out of it? Do you want to get help? So that's guiding. Basically, counseling is guiding the person to think in the right direction so he'll change his way of thinking. And teaching is for people who are ready to listen and obey. Some people are ready already, you can just tell them. So you are ready, but still I use some counseling skill. And counseling makes people feel respected. Okay, any more questions? Yeah. Uh, I know I'm over time, but I just want to use three minutes, three minutes, to say about fighting the spiritual warfare because there has been so much misunderstanding about the fighting the warfare. And I want to say this very briefly. I have no time to read the Bible passages, but what I want to say, you probably already know, that Jesus has said, "I've given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions." So we all have authority over have, over Satan. And the point is, how do we fight the spiritual warfare? In Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at 12, verse 12, it talks about the armor of God, the full armor of God. And you notice that the armor of God includes what? It includes the truth. It includes righteousness. It includes faith. It includes the gospel. And, the, um, and then the the helmet of salvation, and then the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and praying always. You notice that a lot of this is following the truth, living out the truth, and then praying. Now for many people, they think they find the devil by shouting, in Jesus' name, devil, leave this church. In Jesus' name, devil, leave this area. In Jesus' name, devil, go away. If the people are not following God, you shout that it's not going to work. It's not going to change anything. In that moment, maybe Satan may move back a little bit, but he will come back in the hearts of people. So the way when you read Ephesians 6 carefully is to live the full Christian life, have a close relationship with God and take care of all the sin problems, and especially the shield of faith, which will stop all the fiery darts of Satan. When he attacks you, faith. I believe God is in control. I believe God is have everything. So it's very important to teach people to have a loving relationship with God and obey God in every way and handle all the problems and then love God and serve God and love the people and preach the gospel and build up people's spiritual life. This is fighting the warfare. Because people spend a lot of time shouting this or driving on demons, just shouting and driving on demons. But the person hasn't handled his life. Satan will come back, the demons will come back. So we realize it's very important the whole spiritual life is not just shouting and then the devil will go away. So this is from the Bible. You can read the Bible. Now, you notice in the book of Acts, Paul was attacked. He was attacked by people who arrested him, put him in jail, but did he in the jail say, in Jesus' name, Satan, go away, Satan, demons, go away. What was he doing in the jail? He was praising God and singing. You don't find that kind of prayer in the whole Bible, except when people drive out demons. Come out in Jesus' name. Except for that, you don't find that kind of prayer. But in the charismatic movement, it seems that just driving out demons from the area will solve all the satanic problems. 
And you think that driving out the same, the spirit of anger, the person will have no more anger. Drive out the demons of adultery, the person will have no more adultery. Is it true? No. The person must have a good relationship with God and take care of his life so, so that he learn how to face temptation and say no to any lust, any kind of uh, attraction of the opposite sex and live a holy life and obey God in every way, have a close relationship. And then he has the power. Now, when people drive out demons, we can of course say in Jesus' name we cast out demons. But at the same time, we can help, help the person to love God and believe God loves him and handle his life. And then his life has a close relationship with God. And then you drive out the demons, the demons will go out easier. It's more complete too. And I noticed this in many meetings. There were some people, some people throw out demons from them. And the next month is the same thing. Next year is the same thing. Three years later, same thing. Because they don't handle the life. And there has been too little teaching about handling, managing the problems in the life. They just talk about driving out the demons. And they think driving out demons with loud voice will solve the problem. It's not loud voice, it's the authority. The authority doesn't have to be loud. It can be very peaceful. You want to be loud, it's okay, but the person might not, might feel very noisy. You keep driving out demons, very noisy, very noisy. It's, it's okay, but don't overdo it. That's what I'm saying. Okay? God bless you all. Hallelujah. Now, you notice all my teachings is based on scripture. I don't follow tradition. I don't follow the tradition of the charismatic church. I want to follow the teaching in the Bible. What does the Bible say? So whenever I see any issue, I look in the Bible to find the answer. And I'm spirit-filled. Some people think if you follow the Bible, you are not spirit-filled. We need both, the Bible and the Holy Spirit. Okay, God bless you all. And then for those people who want to give testimony afterwards, after we give out the certificate, and then uh, you want uh, to give testimony that you have healing that is sustaining, we can videotape you and you can glorify God.